Hey everybody, this is Pam at the Paper Outpost. Do you want to see an alternative to the Edith Holden books that we so dearly love and cherish and treasure uh, in our junk journal world? <clears throat> so first I just want to show you some examples of the Edith Holden books. There's a lot of different um, versions of them out there. This one is called The Nature Notes of an, Edwar an Edwardian Lady, Edith Holden. And it has beautiful, if you've ever seen her books, um, they're gorgeous. The illustrations, she was a very, very talented nature artist. She also wrote poems and um, text related to her pictures. And she became uh, one of the matriarchs of the ephemera pieces. I don't know if it would really been ephemera pieces, but... The junk journalers oogle over her stuff. That's what I'm trying to say. We all love her drawings. They're just so beautiful and delicate and dainty. Um, sometimes these books are hard to find. Sometimes they're very expensive when you find them. Sometimes you can get good deal deals on them depending on where you locate them. Sometimes they have to be imported from other countries. Um, and it's kind of a hit or miss thing. So if you're you know, wishing you had more Edith Holden in your life, this is nature notes of an edwardian lady now there's another one called the country you can't really see that the country diary of an edwardian lady and the whole thing behind using these books is they're still copyrighted so we cannot scan them so i can't make digi kits out of these but what we can do or you can do is if you actually own the book or you happen to buy a fundle which you'll get a page from the book um but you'll get you can use the real page from the book so you could cut this page out, cut this little bird out, and use that in your junk journal. Um, so that's kind of what we do with, in, so we don't scan and sell. That's the idea with copyrighted images. And you have to be careful. Um, it's not fun researching copyright. It's um, boring and tedious, uh, but it is important, and it's important to the originator of the artwork or whoever owns the copyright. So we want to be respectful to those folks out there, but we also want to let them know we really honor uh, their work, and um, Edith Holden has since passed. She only lived till about 24 years old. Um, unfortunately, she fell off, a, I believe, off a log across a river or a little brook and fell in and drowned. But before that, she certainly produced a lot of beautiful, beautiful um, art. And she lives on forever through us in the junk journal world. So I hope that's a good thing. And um, uh, so if you're having a hard time finding Edith Holden, because a lot of us do um, search for these and they are hard to find sometimes, or like I said, you, they get priced up really high sometimes. Uh, if you don't know Janet Marsh, she has another um, similar style to her, uh, Edith Holden. She does beautiful imagery. I'll just give you a flip. Uh, this is called The Nature Diary. And I wouldn't be surprised if she was inspired by Edith. Um, she's got beautiful imagery in here as well. And I'll just slowly flip through it. And I thought what I would use this particular video for is a resource for all of us um, to look, uh, to think about what um, authors um, or illustrative artists that we know of that maybe we could add a comment to, like, oh, hey, have you ever heard of this artist or this um, author? She uh, does beautiful books, and um, you might it might be taking a, a worth of looking. It might be worth taking a look at her work as well, so we can learn from each other here. So if you know of anybody who produces beautiful nature imagery um, that might be helpful to junk journal makers, please post a comment down below and we can keep adding to this as a re uh, resource database for those of us who are looking for beautiful um, botanical drawings. And uh, of course, I don't know what this is, a um, little page tab. Um, so yeah and remember we're not going to scan and copy these we are just going to actually use the the pages but they're just so beautiful just makes you want to be crawl right in there and uh just start cutting some of these out and so you just have them at the ready you could just spend an afternoon just cutting images out and i think that would be a lot of fun so kind of think back into your database um maybe there are some children's books that have a lot of um nature art in it botanical art flora and fauna style art like it's a beautiful uh, dragonfly 
And then you have to decide, do I take the dragonfly or do I take these individual moths? You know, it's stuff like that. that are, these are the hard decisions in life, but somebody's got to make them. And it'll be us, the junk journal makers, the folks who make their own books out of, you know, whatever we can get our hands on that's close by. Look at this pretty page. Isn't that beautiful? I just would want to frame that and put it on the wall. It's so pretty. Um, look at it. And it tells you what everything is. Oh, how nice is that? Okay, let's see what this is. This is the... Huh. It says it's the pink. I can't read it. I got to get my glasses. Help me. It doesn't look very pink. Okay, but it is number one. I'm reading that, right? Right? The Hang on, I got to hold it. Oh, no, sorry. It doesn't say pink. It says <laughs> the male common blue butterfly. Okay, that's why it is so important when you're over 50 to put those readers on because you just never know what you're actually seeing. But uh, yeah, and you know, bees, butterflies, dragonflies, caterpillars. Oh, that would be fun to do a caterpillar digi kit. I should write that down. Somebody write that down. Oh, that would be me. Okay, um, reaching for a pen, writing it down somewhere. Um, where now the empty paper? Okay, I found I found an envelope. Caterpillar. Pillar. Digi kits. Oh, if you have other ideas for digi kits, feel free to put them down below. Maybe a dreams digi kit. I just saw that word over there. Dreams. Okay, these are digi kit ideas. Okay, I got a capture. That's probably one of the most important things I could say to anybody who's creative is capture your ideas when you have them because they will whoosh, out of your brain and be gone before you know it. I forgot to mention 25% off all digi kits until the end of August, 2023 computer files only does not include the print and mail digi kits. There you go. Okay. So great time to stock up if you're looking to stock up for Christmas or anything like that. Um, okay. So moths, are fun also and moths can often be more beautiful than butterflies i know i know uh, moths this is nothing there's no absolute in nature but moths when they rest you know how do you tell the difference between a butterfly and a moth a moth at rest will lay its wings flat like see the moth 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 probably a moth 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 but a butterfly at rest holds its wings together um that's a good thing i could find a butterfly now for my life um, it's going to be a book. It's, it's a book of moths. There are, I think more moths than there are butterflies. I don't know why I think that I just, I just feel, can somebody look that up? Are there more moths, species of moths, names of moths and butterflies? I think there are, but, um, and some moths can be really quite striking. Um, look at how pretty this page is. Isn't that just gorgeous with the little pretty font? I mean, she has pretty font just like Edith can have very pretty uh, font, pretty font. In some of the books, not all of the books. Some of the books have the pretty font. Some of the books of Edith have regular font, like just regular text font. Uh, I don't, oh, there's some pretty font. Okay, then we go back to regular font. Okay, I don't know why. Maybe this is what she wrote. Maybe this is, or this was in her diary and this is what she wrote about. Oh, maybe that's what it is, okay. So now Jan, what's her name? Janet Marsh, Janet Marsh's Nature Diary. Okay, she, and there are others too. I just happened to grab this one as an example because I just ordered some. So I just love these pictures. I just, I mean, look at that. Is that not beautiful? Wouldn't that be like you fussy cut that out and then use that as a page trim or a belly band? Oh, that would be so pretty. You could probably get two belly bands out of that. Oh, the ideas, they're just so, they're just so, and then, and then there's some interesting creatures like this guy. I think it's a mole or a vole or something like that. Okay, let's look it up. Number seven, put on the goggles, Pam. Let's see what it is. It is a mole. It's a talpa europea. A talpa europea. Yeah, there we go. It's a mole. <laughs> if I ever saw a mole. That would be a mole. He just looks like he wants to dig his way through the earth and make tunnels. Um, so yeah, um, so kind of think um, botanical imagery, nature imagery, trees, leaves, butterflies, dragonflies, birds, um, forest, things like that. If you can think of books, authors, where you've seen some prettiness, 
and that might be useful, especially in the the drawn form, the um, illustration, the drawing form, as opposed to a photograph, um, are highly desired in the junk journal world as a, a popular genre or theme for junk journals. So we all know we just love, oh, look how pretty that is. That's just lovely. Oh, wouldn't that be pretty on a, like a brown page, you know, just popping that beautiful white. I don't know if you can see it very well. I can't print. Bring it closer. Pretty flower. What flower is that? Now I have to know. Okay, I'm going in. It's a gel gelder rose, viburnum opulus. There you go. I would not have. I would have gotten that wrong on a multiple choice. Definitely, definitely. Um, oh, look at these. Do I see page trims and belly bands here, or, or bookmarks? Oh my gosh, how pretty would that be on a bookmark? Oh, oh. Oh, I just, where's my, where's my, what's her name in Gone with the Wind? Fan. I need my fan. <laughs> I'm just like overwhelmed with the beauty of it all. Um, so lovely. Just so lovely. A fish. Maybe for a uh, nice one for a, a man's journal. Eh. <laughs> oh, I can't believe that. <laughs> Some of the things, maybe they're not beautiful, but they are part of nature. So there you go. Look at the duck and the family. That is so pretty. Can you see well? I hope so. Okay. And some bigger flowers. Um, gosh, there's just so many ideas with these. This is a marigold. And uh, um, a pigeon of some sort. A dove, maybe. I think a dove and a pigeon are very close or even possibly the same. Look at this. Just look at this little bumblebee. He, I'm sorry, but he has it, he has it going. I just adore him. Oh, I'd love to draw him. He's just so cute. Um, so look at this. Just pretty, pretty darn pretty stuff. And even the, the text, I mean, all this is, this is a diary. So this is what this person, I guess it was Janice Mar Janice, Janet Marsh, noticed as she's walking through her world and documenting the things um, that she found. Uh, as I walked along the carrier by the tall poplars, I noticed that the buds were coming out of the lower branches, but high branches still looked as though it was January. I mean, just noticing these things, the subtle differences, I just, I just find great joy in that, and great joy in nature. And I know uh, many of you are nature buffs. Um, they're probably the most popular digikits that I sell, the nature-related ones, the flowers, the butterflies, the birds. Um, so I can kind of see that I'm not alone in that um, theme. I do, I find that there's a lot of us who really like that. And it's so easy to do, and you can accommodate it to any time of the year, like whether you're doing spring, summer, fall, winter. You know, you can accommodate the nature themes to that. Um, that's just plain fun. I mean trees barren with no leaves just shapes and shadows and and things like that can be so beautiful um with snow drifts and things like that and incorporating weather in it as well um it's just too, too much plum too much fun to get excited about um robin's eggs i would imagine or something I, I, i'm always like any blue egg is a robin's egg to me until proven otherwise um that looks like a pussy willow of some sort Oh, I had a pussy willow tree in the, my backyard. I loved it. Oh, I, I loved my pussy willow tree. I, I think um, I think I may have even planted it at one point, and it grew and grew and grew and grew and grew. And I would, as a kid, I was I would go and wrap my arms around the tree. I was a literal tree hugger. I would go and I would put my ear against the tree and just listen to the internal sounds of the tree, which was probably uh, created just from the tree, like you know, rocking back and forth a little bit with the wind and maybe the branches and things. But I could I could hear these magical sounds. And I, to me, they were just like the tree was alive and talking to me. And, and um, I don't know, I've always had a very strong bond with nature. I studied biology in my undergrad years. I was always fascinated with life and how, um, you know, life finds a way. Uh, I like that line from Jurassic Park. I, I think it was the old scientist walking through and he said life will always find a way and uh to survive and go on and you know we look at the cockroach and admire it for its um okay it's not the cutest bug in the world i agree but um you know it's got st stamina and staying power and it finds a way to survive everything nuclear war ice age whatever it is it's gonna make it and so we we need to 
pay homage to, you know, every, you know, form of life. The good old dandelion. I mean, she even exalted the dandelion. Oh, I got a flower right. Yay. <laughs> um, and gave it a full page of glory where so many of us are willing to toss it away as an as a, um, undesirable weed. Uh, many have found it has um, health benefits and, and just natural beauty in and of itself. Um, it is no lesser of a flower than a rose or a lily or anything else. Um, it is a flower in its own right and doing very well and very hardy on um, most of our lawns. I think this is a dead squirrel, gray squirrel, hind legs. I don't, why do I think it's a dead squirrel? I started to draw a squirrel which had fallen foul of my father-in-law's shotgun. Okay, this squirrel croaked. I had been there at the kill and also, although I'd been sorry and reproachful, it proved to be an ideal opportunity to get to know the shape and color of the animal. So she had an opportunity to basically Leonardo da Vinci herself into a, a moment of being able to draw life, even though it was dead, but you, it's not moving. You can focus on the shape, the true shape and the colors and everything. And it does give you that opportunity. Um, if you're not familiar, Leonardo da Vinci used to like to take um, people who were deceased and take them into his um, chamber, I guess, and he would draw them extensively the insides, the outsides, everything. Anatomical drawings were um, a huge part of what he did and a lot of our understanding of how the human body works came from Leonardo and his documentation of it because he was so accurate in his drawings, we were able to capture that and see it and then pass it on to future generations. Um, it must have been a stinky mess at his place, I cannot imagine. But, uh, you know, thankfully that he was able to do that. And I think there are some interesting stories on how he procured his, um, his uh, you know, models. <laughs> so, um, yeah, very interesting guy. But he was uh, driven by learning how everything worked and how it was put together and quite the engineer in his time. Um, bull rushes. Uh, anybody know bull rushes? Yeah, cattails, bull rushes. Um, I don't know if those are the same thing, but I always sort of think of them as the same thing. What did she call them? Um, oh, she's got a Latin name. Uh, let me see if I can get in there and read it. Typhacea. Typhacea. Reed mace family, often called bull rush or cattail. Yeah, baby. She's got it going. <laughs> Okay, no, I didn't pre-read that. That's actually what it says. I, uh, so I guess they're used interchangeably. Maybe there's some distinction somewhere, depending on where you're born or what side of the river you're on. You know how it goes. And look at these, just lovely, pretty font and then general normal font, just like the Edith Holden book. Just saying, just saying. Um, and beautiful imagery. And I love, when, see, here's taking like a fall or a winter scene. You take a leaf, the same leaf, and you could uh, show it through the four seasons. Wouldn't that be cool? That would be so cool. I mean, what, if, uh, just how about a junk journal with the four seasons in it? And maybe you have four signatures and each signature represents a different season. That would be really cool. I love these big page spreads. I mean, these are great pages to use to make envelopes and things like that because they have a decoration all over them. This could be the inside, this could be the outside, and you just go ahead and make an envelope out of it. That would be so pretty. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, maybe we should make one. We have time. I mean, they're so easy to make. Let's just make one. I'm just going to pull out the old craft knife and... Uh, Slaughter the book, as I do. I know, look away, look away if it bothers you. It's all right, it doesn't bother me anymore, I'm over it. Um, just because I see there's, oops, there's so many possibilities in here. Oh, I'm gonna tear it. Um, there we go. Okay, let me just go ahead and, and snip this edge off. Got a nice edge to work with. And, okay, there. So we have this. Let's just make something fun out of it because it is fun because that's what we do. We just have fun with these crazy papers. So, okay, let's see. We could do this a couple of ways. We could bring this up from the bottom and then use this as the flap. That might be the, the nice way to do it, I think. Um, we could make um, um, a bookmark out of it, but I think we're going to make a, we're going to make an envelope. I want to make one that fits in the journal. 
And even if it doesn't, I'll still use it. It doesn't matter. It's always good to have options. Oh, that's so pretty. Yeah, and maybe I'll come along and give it a fancy cut. Just because we're here. We're together. So I'm just using some decorative edge scissors. Running along here. Giving it an edge. And once you get going with something like this, you just want to make a bunch of them. And you'll be going through that book and pulling out all sorts of different pages to make your stuff. I'm just going to use a <sighs> Fabrifix. Clear silicone glue, fabric to fabric, fabric to paper, paper to paper. Just a nice thin little bead from the Sugar Bells Icing Piping Bottle. It's so easy to squeeze in that bottle. Okay, so there we go. That's going to become solid. Let's grab a dauber of choice. And guess what? It's the brown today. It's the walnut stain, which you can't read, but it does say walnut stain. Distressing brown. You don't have it? Get some shoe polish. That'll work. Get some makeup, that'll work. Um, even co saturated coffee dye will work. Brown paint will work. There's a lot of ways to age um, papers. That's what I should do a video on, different ways that you can get the aging of the paper. And I should show like the, the makeup and the, you know, food color and all that kind of stuff. Paint, pastels, chalks. Um, all this distress ink. Oh my gosh. I think I'll, I'll, I'll expire before all my distress ink expires. So uh, yeah, if you're early on in the game, you don't need a million things, but I know sometimes you want them. And I get that because that was me. I had to have everything, everything in every color. And um, that um, is a very interesting uh, journey because the hunt is half the fun. It, it truly is. When you're starting to look for junk journal things out there in the world, I get it. No, I've been there. I've been there with you. I know, I, I, I still am there with you. What am I kidding? I'm out there looking through the thrift stores and the garage sales and the yard sales and the flea markets and the Craigslist and the Facebook marketplace and the auctions and estate sales and antique malls. And, uh, you know, it's all fun. It's just, it's fun times. Time's well spent. Um, you can share it with your friends, your family, take them along. And they're like, what? What are you buying? I can't explain it. Just step aside and let me make the deal. That, that sometimes has to be said. But they're like, oh, you want this? No, it's okay. It's okay. I, I do need it. You don't need it. Yes, I do. It's like that. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about. You've been there. Yeah. Sometimes you don't bring them. You just go. Yeah, so it's easier. <laughs> Leave them home. <laughs> Um, sometimes they just want to go to the beach. You know what I mean? They just want to go to the beach. Let them go. It's okay. All right. All right. There we go. Now, what will we do with you? I think we need to do like something across here and maybe a button. That would be so pretty. Let me go look for one. Hang on. Okay, I'm back. Okay, so I have some twiny stuff. Let me go a little closer. Too close. Back and up. Okay, how about... There. Okay, that's pretty good. Okay, so maybe some twiny stuff here. I like that. Just like that. It's very simple. It's, it's it, Anybody can do this. It's not rocket science. It's easy to do. You just draw a line with your glue. You don't even have to have a straight line. It can be like a podgepodge line because that's how most of mine end up. Just a nice little bead of glue. It doesn't take much, but the nice thing is this Fabrifix will give you a good grab. Yeah, so it's not going to roll off and peel off. If you use white glue here, it's going to just come right off, probably. Yeah, unless you've got some really good strong stuff, but like the regular stuff, mm, ah, it's going to pop right off. But this thing, that's going to stay. Okay. Yeah, stay down there. Don't make me look bad. Okay. All right. There we go. Once we get all settled, we're looking good. Oh, I like that. Whoop, where are you? There you are. I like that. I can't, I can't be wobbling around. Got to stay in frame. Okay, so I have two handmade... Well, they're, they're buttons that I decorated up. I will call them altered buttons. Just regular buttons on the back, but let's see which one looks better. We've got this one. Oh, that's really pretty. Look at that. That looks really nice. This guy? He looks good too, but nah. I think we're going to go with this guy because he's got solid. I like that. I don't know why I didn't poke the hole. Nope, didn't poke the hole. Left that that way, but I think I want to do some, some twiny something dangling. I feel like I need twiny dangle for some reason. Maybe I can do a bow. Let's do a double bunny ear bow. Now this is, 
in my theory, if you do double bunny ears and you do left over right, you tuck that one in and you pull. Now your bunny ears are too big right at this point, but the nice thing about doing the bunny ears is your both of your bow, come here, both of your bow loops are on top. And that is always a challenge for some reason in the junk journal world. But the bunny ear, the double bunny ear seems to seems to work well in that department. Okay. Let's let's glue that on there. More of the Fabrifix. Bring in the Fabrifix. All right, here we go. Let's put a blob down. Okay. Shoo. Put you there. Doesn't need much. You don't have to glue the whole thing down, just some of it. Did I get it pretty much in the middle? Not bad. And maybe I'm just going to put that right on top of that. That's kind of bumpy, though. Maybe I'll put it under. Have it hang here. Maybe I'll move the whole thing north. Whoop. Let's see. How's this going to work? Maybe I'll, I'll forget the button and just leave that there. <laughs> no, I want the button. Okay, what's the best way to do this? It's going to be bumpy. I can either go underneath it or what I can do, I can remove the bow, pick it up. I have time. I could glue this down. Yeah, maybe that's what I'll do. You know what I'm gonna do? This is crazy, but I'm gonna I'm gonna cut the string where the button will be. Yeah, so I'm just gonna remove that bump completely. I have no idea if that's the right width. We're just taking a chance here. We'll just get rid of it. Get rid of what is in our way, and we'll see if we can do it now. Okay. Yeah. Now the button is flat. There's no impedance. All is well. Everything is smooth. And we're going to put the glue can did I move oh I moved the whole project let me back up a bit because I feel like I'm not giving you a good view there okay there now we place the button down yeah now we're good okay all right now we have this well maybe we're gonna put this somewhere else how about that maybe we just here oh that's pretty Maybe we just put it there it doesn't have to be right there it could be but it's getting a little complicated there you know what I mean we don't like complicated no we like we like easy peasy simple I'm gonna put you there there we go. There. Now we have that. And now we have this beautiful envelope that we can fill with all sorts of goodies and tuck in our junk journal. Very easy to do, just with a beautiful, a beautiful book page. All done. Okay, this doesn't look like it's in the middle, but we, we did our best. Okay, we did. All right, so I think we need to hear from Snuffer Pants. Snuffers, are you here? Yes, I'm right here. I'm here in the building. I have not left the building. I am here. Okay. Now. I'm going to turn you over. I'm going to put this camera a little closer. Not too close. You know, I don't like seeing up my... Oh, Mom, is way too close. It's not bad. I'll stay here. Okay. So, hello, everybody. This is Sunshine, Cub Pup Reporter, reporting to you from the Paper Outpost. Um, so, um, did you like the book? I, I kind of liked it. Yep. I help Mom when she's carrying the books around upstairs. I'm bumping up and up and up. The book, the book comes in the door, bumping up and up and up. Mom goes upstairs with the book and puts it in the dedicated pile of like books. Yes. There's a room dedicated to books upstairs. And we often go there. And then when she goes and creates things, she goes bump and up and up and up and up. She goes and gets a book and then up and up and up and up and up over to the cutter and she cuts the book apart. It's quite a thing to see. Maybe one day she'll film that. <laughs> it's a little hard to cut and film at the same time. I can film it. Okay. Um, we'll work on that. We'll practice, okay? Okay. And um, if I'm really good and I come out of the book room when called. Pum, 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 pum. I get a treat. Yeah. <laughs> so that's why I'm always there with mom when she's in the book room. <laughs> yes, you are always at my feet. Okay, I think I put myself to sleep now. Um, um, <coughs> oh, excuse me. Excuse me. Sorry. Pardon me. Um, I'm awake again. Oh, no, I'm gone. Okay, so we'll see you next time at the Paper Outpost. <laughs> okay, that was a long and chatty little festive moment from you there. Thank you, son. Always, always a lot to say. <laughs> He's getting feistier in his old age. So grab a book, make an envelope, make a bookmark, make a pocket, a tuck, a page trim, a belly band, whatever floats your boat, um, and just have fun. They're your books to play with. You, you own the pages. You can tear apart the pages and do things with the pages. That's okay. Uh, just remember, 
if you don't know the copyright thing, don't don't scan and copy and, and sell them and things like that because that would be very bad, very bad, very bad. Okay, so um, it, okay, so reminder again, twenty five percent off all digikits through the end of August, twenty twenty three. Uh, an excellent deal if you're getting ready to make things for the holidays or just for fun. Maybe you want to uh, pick up a few more flower or butterfly or uh, dragonfly, whatever it is. I got you covered. 200 kits to pick from. If you don't like to print them out, um, I do have a print and mail service where I will print them out for you. You get um, uh, 50 pages printed on lightweight cardstock. Um, that does not include the 25% off though. Um, uh, but those are hard copy mailed to you. All I need is the list of DigiKit names, and you can email me that list to Pam at the paper .com, or you can um, message me at Etsy Message and send me the list. I only need the first two or three words to know which ones you're talking about. And um, I also sell fundals, which are collections of old and interesting papers. Um, back up a bit so you can see an example of one. But um, there'll be some letters, some music pages, dictionary pages, old antique ledger, checks, receipts, postcards, uh, black and white photos, over 100 plus pieces, fun things to use in junk journals, very interesting for historians and collectors, and p anybody who wants to get their hands on some really old stuff and, and get a seat, you know, to see what that really feels like. It's pretty cool to think how old some of these pieces are. And um, what else? Oh, um, I have a free monthly emailed newsletter, and um, it, it, you're going to get, there's a freebie section on it every time at the very bottom where you can get a free digital image e emailed to you every month in the newsletter once you sign up. And then um, you can get a page list of supplies, page list, it's eight pages long uh, of junk journal supplies, just things to keep your eye open for out there in the world. Uh, so for you to make junk journals as well as a note from the bookmaker which explains what a junk journal is and how to use it and a page list of ideas on how to break a blank page. That's what I was trying to say. Uh, my videos come out Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays and Saturdays, 7 a.m. Eastern Time. My podcasts come out Tuesdays and Thursdays, new audio material and all days of the week you're going to find video podcasts on Spotify. And um, what else? Um, I have an Etsy shop where you're going to find did I already say that? Maybe. But uh, journals, bundles, bundles, kits when available, digikits, fundals, and the print and mail option. I have an Amazon shop where if you're looking for favorite tools and supplies, if you see me use it here, I try and find the link to these items. I'm not sure I have this one. Maybe I have something similar to it um, in there. So you can purchase them. It does help my shop, but you do not pay more for the items for using my link. So thank you very much. And I hope that finds it easier for you to find the items as well. Uh, also, I have a t-shirt shop if you like the phrase create with reckless abandon or everything is a craft supply until proven otherwise you will find you can put that on the t-shirt sweatshirt zip hoodie. You can pick the colors. There's lots of colors to pick from um, a mug, a tote or a water bottle. So there you go. Great for family, friends uh, or fellow crafters or yourself. Um, also, you can find me on Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook. Come and join our Facebook group, the Paper Outpost Facebook group. We're having fun doing weekly and monthly challenges over there, as well as seeing what you guys make from these videos. And remember, most of all, that fun can be simple and create with reckless abandon, everybody. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.